Hallo ihr Lieben. So, wir werden jetzt äh, durch die Tür gehen. Das sind diese ganzen kleinen Leuchtdinger. So toll, ne? Hier, wo sind denn, wo sind die denn eigentlich hier, meine Leute? Da. da sind sie und sie sind nämlich gekommen, um all diese Leuchtdinger aufzusammeln, um daraus eine riesen Show zu kreieren. Ich finde das so toll, das ist so eine tolle Story. Also es ist echt, äh, naja, ich habe ja schon so oft gesagt, wie genial ich das finde. Und das tue ich auch weiterhin. Wir können jetzt übrigens unter Wasser atmen. Ja. Wir gehen jetzt einfach mal und suchen Poseidon. Hä? Du hast doch gerade die ganze Zeit unter Wasser rumge... Du bist doch die ganze Zeit unter Wasser rumgeschwommen. Die kann jetzt gar nicht warm sein. So, ich habe heute, oder sagen wir gerade eben, meinen finalen Mix für das Flüchtlingsmusical abgegeben. Die haben mich jetzt doch breit geschlagen, dass ich da zwei Songs für komponiere. Eigentlich wollte ich keinen Song dafür komponieren. Und nun waren die aber alle so unglücklich mit dem Out, dass äh, sie mich so notfallmäßig dazugeholt haben. Okay. Und ich wiederum kann ja immer gar nicht anders, als mich da irgendwie, als halt einfach, ja, ich weiß auch nicht, also... Musik ist halt überall, ne? Und ich bin wie so ein... wie so ein... Katalysator für Musik. Das heißt nicht, dass sie gut sein muss, ne? <lacht> ich kann auch wirklich den allerschlimmsten Schrott produzieren. Aber... das ist ihnen anscheinend irgendwie lieber als... das, was sie bekommen haben. Also nicht, dass ich jetzt den allergrößten Schrott produziert habe. Nein, nein, ich wollte nur sagen, das kann ich auch. Und zwar ohne Probleme. Nein, nein, ich habe jetzt zwei Songs geschrieben. Heute habe ich den zweiten abgegeben. Den kennen die noch nicht. Den ersten fanden sie ganz toll. Bei dem zweiten ist so eine Hip-Hop-Nummer. Das liegt mir gar nicht. Weiß ich jetzt auch ehrlich gesagt nicht. Hip-Hop kann ich auch nicht. Ich habe jetzt eine Soul-Nummer draus gemacht. Und ähm, ja, jetzt fahre ich mal der Dinge. I'm here to bring you home, Poseidon. Elizabeth Sobek, Alpha Prime. Master Override activated. Restoring Poseidon's subordinate function to original code. Mega. Okay. Gotta bring this back to Gaia. Tja, er muss mir zu diesem Schacht zurückkommen. Ja, nun bin ich mal sehr gespannt, ob die das mögen, was ich da gemacht habe. Also ich hab, ich mag es mittlerweile, es ist der totale Ohrwurm. Das bedeutet was? Las Vegas erwacht zum Leben oder was? Das wäre ja geil. Ja, richtig. Ach, ist schon toll. Guck mal hier, wie das jetzt alles... Das ist doch alles vorher nicht da gewesen. Abgefahren. Guckt euch das an. Frozen Joghurt, da oben. Hätte ich jetzt auch Bock drauf. Shark Cage Experience. Ist ja toll, ey. Mega. Ich 
Die ganzen Leuchtreklamen. Toll. So krabbeln wir denn so langsam, Aloy? Soll ich so anstrengend sein? Diese ganzen Las Vegas Skulpturen. Doch mal, wie toll das ist. Das war vielleicht ein China-Restaurant oder so. Wahnsinn. Wird detailreich. Das ist echt toll. Hier, guck. Geht's hier eigentlich irgendwo hin? Glitschige, glibberige Rolltreppen. Überall diese... Guck mal, wieder so Fische, ne? Das ist echt mega. Ich bin echt so ein Fan. Fangirl. Apropos Fangirl. Ich habe gerade meine Fanpost mal ausgepackt. Muss ich mal beantworten. Ich mache das immer so im Kopf. Ich nehme mir immer Zeit dafür. Und jetzt ist es mal wieder so weit, ich sammle, ne? Es ist jetzt nicht so, dass ich jeden Tag 100 Briefe kriege. Deswegen sammle ich einfach, bis es genug sind. Und dann nehme ich mir mal so einen halben Tag, äh, sag mal, den ID, hier rauskommen. Hm. Scheiß Aufzug, Schacht. Ich glaube, jetzt bin ich völlig falsch, oder? Ja. Komm ich wieder runter? Komm ich wieder raus? <lacht> hm. Wo ist denn dieser Aufzug, Schacht? Ach so. Naja, sag das doch gleich. Da. Das ist schon echt irre. Hier sind die Aufzüge. Moon must have built this before the place flooded. Nice to work. Nice not to have to climb back up. <lacht> Darauf ein Schluck Gurke Minze Wasser. Super lecker. Hab ich selber gemacht. Minze von meinem Balkon und Gurke aus meinem Kühlschrank. <lacht> und dann einfach ein paar Gurkenscheiben abschneiden und ein bisschen Minze pflücken und zerstampfen. Und dann ab in einen Krug mit Wasser und ab in den Kühlschrank einen Tag ziehen lassen. Super geil. Wisst ihr was? Ich kann doch jetzt hier meine Waffe verbessern. Ich habe doch hier so, ein, so, ein Heck, so eine Heckflosse hier irgendwo eingesammelt. Da. War die das? Yes. Flutschlitzer-Heckflosse. Geilo. Ach, come on. Was ist ein Schreckflügel, ey? My ass. Und noch, ein, noch was vom Flutschlitzer. Ich wollte die nie wiedersehen. Hm. Na gut. Selbstverständlich bleibt es eine Aufgabe. Oh mein Gott. 
Oh, Wie toll ist das denn? Oh mein Gott, das ist toll. Es ist ja toll. Ich liebe es. Schon haben wir Las Vegas wieder. <lacht> Toll. Ach süß, ey. Tolle Story. Das machen wir auf jeden Fall. Ganz genau. Wir können jetzt alles. Wir können denn jetzt tauchen. Aber vor allem würde ich jetzt gerne mal ganz kurz mit euch zu Gaia. Zack. Und den Kern zurückgeben. Darauf ein Schluck Gurkenwasser. Dieses Seilwerfer-Ding habe ich bei Horizon Zero Dawn immer benutzt, um die äh, Donnerkiefer und so am Boden festzuzubbeln. so lustig, weil sie denen ist und immer so einen lustigen Duktus hat. Weil jetzt schreibt sie gerade, ich habe dich angerufen, aber du wolltest nicht mit mir sprechen. <lacht> ich habe mein Telefon einfach auf Stumm. Heard the Lowlanders have been fighting rebels by the coast, west of the Grove. If you're still helping the chief handle those scabs, you might want to talk to Pregella at Tide's Reach. Okay. Vielleicht hat sie auch einen Flutschlitzer Heckflosse für mich. If you walk by, you'll miss out on a good trade. Ich habe so einen Ohrwurm, ne? Das ist so schlimm. Von diesem Song, den ich jetzt geschrieben habe für die Kids. Das ist immer das Schlimmste, dass man es dann ewig nicht aus dem Kopf kriegt. Egal, was man da fabriziert hat. Es bleibt einem dann im Kopf. Ich finde es so toll, wie dieser Platz sich verändert. Wie die hier Sachen reinschleppen und so. Ich finde es echt... Wenn es so mitwächst, ne? Wenn es in der Story so Sinn Hier die ganzen Kisten, als es war... Alles am Anfang nicht da. Es kommt nach und nach dazu. Da ist sie ja. Welcome back, Aloy. I see you have recovered Poseidon. Das 
So, jetzt haben wir doch schon ein großes Stück von Gaia wieder hergestellt. Aloy, can you come downstairs? Beta has something you need to hear. Okay. Yeah. I'll be right down. Aloy, I have managed to unlock additional rooms within the facility. Got it. Hi, Gaia. Hello, Aloy. Oh, jetzt ist aber hier okay. You mentioned that the superstorms have subsided. Is that ether at work? Yes. Thanks to ether's capabilities, weather patterns in the local region should mostly stabilize for the time being. That'll be a relief for the Tanakh. One of their villages is still recovering after a mudslide caused the whole place to flood. I will continue to stabilize the atmosphere for as long as I can. What can you tell me about Demeter? Demeter sows, fertilizes. So once I bring it back, all the blight out there will start to get better. While permanent restoration requires the abilities of Hephaestus, I may be able to improve conditions in the region for a while. However, a word of warning. Like Aether and Poseidon, Demeter's response to my query was highly irregular. Alone and frightened. It may have taken measures to assure its security. Okay. I'll keep my guard up. The missing subordinate functions. What can you tell me about them? Artemis rewilded the Earth with a variety of animal species. Eleuthia was responsible for gestating, nurturing, and acculturing a new generation of human beings. Apollo was tasked with preserving, organizing, and disseminating vast archives of human knowledge and cultural achievements. Unfortunately, all archived Apollo data was purged on the 2nd of February, 2066, by order of Ted Farrow. Farrow, huh? I really hate that guy. Understandable. He appears to have been pathologically narcissistic, impulsive, and unstable. All three of the missing functions have already served their purpose, or were prevented from doing so. Do you still need them? Restoring their remaining elements would increase my team, empowering my overall function. Unfortunately, as we now know they are in the possession of Fire Zero, attaining them in the short term is very likely impossible. I guess our best shot at recovering them is by taking over the Zenith base. But we'll need Hephaestus and a bunch of combat machines to do that. Correct. Were you able to make use of Poseidon? Yes. Many rivers, streams, and lakes associated with the regional watershed have been detoxified. As a result, red algae growth levels have seen a marked decline. Quit. According to my data, however, It appears a localized occurrence of red algae continues to persist near the coast. Maybe I'll look into it when I can. So, Poseidon spent the last 20 years hiding out in Las Vegas. From the data I found, it seems the city had an advanced water reclamation system. Is that why Poseidon went there? Most likely. In an effort to protect itself, Poseidon sought out a safe harbor where it could access water supply functions. Has gerechnet Las Vegas in der Wüste. Buried and encased in a protective dome, it could guard against any threats. Like three Osiram showmen. I suspect that was not the first time it felt the need to repel trespassers. So once emerged. You'll regain the capacity to mass-produce machines at cauldrons around the world. Yes, and to program their behavioral routines, or even control them directly. So you could build an army of machines, attack the Zeniths and take them out. It is in my nature to take any and all necessary steps to preserve life on Earth, human life above all. 
So yes, once I have been empowered with the capacities of Hephaestus, I could design, build, and command such an army. Given the nature of the far zenith threat, doing so may be our only option. I must admit, however, that I have misgivings about using such technology to kill, no matter how aggressive the enemy. That's good. It means you have a conscience. As Elizabeth intended. Indeed. Why did Aether take up residence in an ancient war museum? As with the other subordinate functions, Aether needed to install itself on a processor with adequate storage and power. One in the museum appears to have been sufficient, given that the holographic displays were still active. So Aether was assured it could stay for as long as it needed to. Correct. Though it is curious that it chose a place surrounded with the ancient ruins of aircraft. Maybe it also felt at home there. Hmm. Schrecklasnacht. So, I guess Beta's here to stay. I gave her a focus. I told her to talk to you to see if she can help. She's... not what I expected. What were you expecting? I don't know. Someone more helpful, I guess. And less pessimistic. It is true she overestimated our progress. However, it is also worth noting that her confidence in your abilities emboldened her to escape the zeniths. I guess so. Give her time. She may yet come around. So, wir müssen ja nicht alles jetzt bequatschen. I'll be off. Farewell for now. Ganz genau, wir können ja jederzeit wiederkommen uns ein bisschen mehr Informationen holen. Jetzt gucken wir doch mal eben, was die Gefährten von uns wollten. There's two of me now. Hey, there's two of you now. <laughs> uh, at least you <laughs> seem to be handling it okay. Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly, but I'm trying. I was hoping you could help me with something. It's about the Tanakh rebels, and it also has to do with the Osir. Really? That doesn't sound good. Let me know what I can do to help. Okay. What's this? Yeah, no, it's right gar nicht. It's a Tanakh game. I, I'm, I'm pretty bad at it, but, but it's fun. Think you could teach me? I would, but I can barely make sense of it myself. We'd be better off learning from Salma in Chainscrape. She can be pretty you know, passionate about it, but she'd know Strike as well as any Tanakh. Guess I'll have to make some time to visit her when I can. Yeah, this must be echt mal machen. Das habe ich noch gar nicht gemacht. I have to get going. Don't go causing too much trouble. Uh, what's wrong with you? What should I do? Wait a minute. What? That is pausiert. With Val and Beta. So, are they here or what? Wo sind die denn? Hier geht's doch irgendwie raus. Oder nicht? Hä? Die ich gerade nicht. Hi! <lacht> Happy Birthday, Isaac! Daddy sure does love his little big man. She found that recording from the data on your focus. She's been watching it a lot. I 
think it helps calm her. You know, I used to watch this a lot too. Whenever I wanted to take my mind off things. Daddy sure does love his little big. But there's something you need to tell me. While you were gone, I came down here to check on her. Then we started talking. Right, Beta? She's been thinking about how to capture Hephaestus, and studying the data Gaia gave her. But we started talking about some other stuff. You know, just getting to know each other, right? And then she told me that one of the Zeniths might be different from the others. Tilda, you saw her at the Hades Proving Lab. Go on. On the way to Earth, the Zeniths never showed their faces. My servitor caretaker referred to them as my benefactors and promised I'd meet them someday when I have learned enough. And then, one day, in my training interface, in it, Tilda was waiting for me in a virtual replica of a house on a cliff overlooking the ocean. It was beautiful. She showed me paintings, books, media files. We met there in secret many times. But a few months later, it stopped. Can you tell us why, Beta? I found some data about Tilda at the Hades Proving Lab. I think she was the liaison between Far Zenith and Zero Dawn. She knew Elizabeth Sobek, that's for sure. Maybe that's why she reached out to you? What else can you tell us about Tilda? She... liked to talk about her paintings. What about herself? Did she ever talk about her life on Earth? How she joined the Zeniths? Something like that? She never said much about herself, and she hated it when I asked too many questions. But I think, back on Earth, she was an expert programmer, given that she built a data channel the other Zeniths couldn't detect. Is there anything else about her that we might be able to use to our advantage? She was the first real person who ever bothered to speak to me. I wasn't really assessing her for strengths and weaknesses. You said that Tilda reached out to you using a data channel? It appeared in my training interface as another assignment. When I opened it, there were a series of intermittent glitches. I realized they formed a transpositional cipher. Instructions on how to open up a new virtual space. When I entered it, my training interface disappeared. Instead of the usual holographic teachers and files, I was in a perfect recreation of her home. And you're sure the other Zeniths never knew about it? To them, it looked like I was still in training. Toiling away. Alone. Krass. So this secret virtual space looked like a house with an ocean view? I could see white caps and hear waves crashing on rocks below. And there were gulls crying outside. Inside, Tilda had frames that showed off her favorite paintings, changing at intervals to match the light. There was an armchair she liked. She'd sit there and gaze outside while I looked through her things. We spent hours in that house. I never wanted to leave. You said Tilda showed you paintings and let you access media files? Every time we met, she showed me a new painting. I, I think she was Dutch. All of her favorite pieces were from their golden age in the 1600s. Portraits, allegories, ships at sea. She had so many. Did it interest you? I liked her media portal. It had so much more than my training interface. Clips, shows, hollows. My favorite was this one called Second Time Around, about a family whose 
kid comes back after disappearing during the hot zone crisis? Right, but did this portal have anything about the Zeniths themselves? Anything we could use? No. Any information about them was redacted. So Tilda set up a secret virtual space where she could talk to you, a house on a cliff. Then later, she cut you off. But other than the fact that Tilda knew Elizabeth, you don't know why she did those things? I don't, okay? I thought of every possible reason that would make her leave, but whatever I did wrong, I don't know what it is. When I finally met the others, she ignored me. Acting like the data channel never existed. None of this even matters. Tilda's the same as the others. It won't help us defeat them. Okay. Tja, die beiden kommen nicht so gut miteinander aus, wa? I'm trying, Laurel. But she is tough to take. I'm out there in the wilds, risking my life every day, and all she can do is hide in there and tell us how hopeless it all is. I'm sorry, she's had a rough time, but she is really not helping right now. Hmm. You always seem to be on top of everything, so I sometimes forget about what you've been through. I mean... It wasn't that long ago you were so banged up you couldn't even walk. That's stimmt. About that. When I pulled you out of the water back near the proving lab, you were muttering Rost's name. You never talk about it. But he raised you. Trained you. You must miss him a lot. Of course I do. But I don't have time to think about that now. I need to get back out there. Okay. I'll keep working with Beta. Gaia says she knows a lot about Zero Dawn. And maybe she just needs some time to adjust, and then she can help us with Hephaestus. Sure. But I won't hold my breath. Okay. Dann würde ich sagen, machen wir hier mal einen Punkt. Und treffen uns im nächsten Let's Play, wenn wir zu dem Meta auf dem Weg sind. Ich freue mich auf euch. Bis bald!